It wasn't always like this. I started off with great aspirations. I remember going to Christmas parties with my workmates, yeah. knocking back the shots, arm around my new best mate who I'd only just met, staggering back to the nearest tube at the end of the night, completely oblivious to all around me. All was well, all was well. Of course, that's before you are presented with your responsibilities. Life's deck of cards. Don't get them all at once, mine. No, they slowly creep up on you one by one. And don't get me wrong, at first, it's great. Independence, yeah, bring it on. I can handle them. My first responsibility, it was my car. A purple Honda Jazz. Insurance cost more than she did, but I didn't care. I was free. <laughs> no more begging for lifts. No more hanging about for cabs. I could go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. But with great power comes great responsibility. Voltaire said that. Or it could have been Spider-Man. Anyway, his name was Craig. See, my mate Bella said he only really fancied me because of my car. And that was totally fine because I only really fancied him because he had a flat right next to the tube in Clapham. And a nice job. He was an accountant. Not certified. Chartered, as I always pedantically insisted on saying. But he earned more money than I did. I was working at K Promenus, a large French bank in the city. Nothing special, mind, just support colleague to an IT help desk, but other responsibility. And being with Craig, I mean, it was great, but that's all it was, really. I laugh. I don't think I ever really fancied him. I think it was just easier than living at home. And we loved to party. God, did we love to party. So for a while, it was great. I had a job, I had a home, sort of, and Craig even had a car for a bit before he wrapped it around a lamppost on the Hammersmith flyover. And then I got up the duff. I don't even know how it happened. I don't even know if it was Craig's, to be honest. Those parties did get quite wild. But on the 3rd of September, 2018, Molly Olivia Turner was presented to the world. I say that. She would have known what this world was like. She probably would have just stayed where she was. You know, it's funny. I think, oh, hey, 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 hey. do you want to leave my stuff alone? Yeah, well, you need an address to get a job at McDonald's, mate. Toss that. Do you want to just... They really don't get it. I must get that at least five times a day. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you just fuck off, mate? Of course it's simple when everything's running smoothly. Lovely, jubbly, hunky, dory, swimmingly. Not as easy when things start to crumble. Let's try walking in my shoes for a week, mate. And we'll see how quickly your smug swagger drains away. Molly was great. Right, she had these big, lovely eyes. Just the cutest laugh you ever could imagine. She, she made us grow up, me and Craig. Another responsibility, yeah, but this one... It was a cinch. And we were doing fine. I mean, I had a job, I had a home, I had a guy who paid the rent on the home, and I had a kid who brought me more joy than I ever could have imagined, expected, or, you know, let's be honest, deserved. And then she got a rash. I don't know what you're thinking. I mean, kids get rashes all the time, right? You know? But this one... This one didn't disappear when you ran a glass tumbler over it. When the doctor told me, I googled it on NHS Direct. Um, it said, meningitis is the bacterial infection of the protective membrane surrounding the brain and the spinal cord, the meninges. It can affect anyone, but is most common in babies, young children, teenagers and young adults. And, and then I skipped a few pages. Uh, most people with bacterial meningitis who were treated quickly will also make a full recovery. Uh, overall, it is estimated that one in 10 cases of bacterial meningitis is fatal. So why Molly? Why my baby? Why, why me? Molly? Why, why couldn't Molly be one of the nine? The doctors, they did what they could, but after a few days, Molly's lovely smile evaporated and her light 
slowly turns into darkness. Yeah, mate. Yeah, well, I could earn some money if somebody would give me a job. No, you won't. Sorry. I'm a trip hazard, so I'm going to fall right open. Well, do you know what? If I'm such an eyesore, why don't I park out outside of the Ritz next time, yeah? We dealt with it quite well the first couple of weeks. Yeah, the funeral, that wasn't easy to plan, but it did actually keep my mind off things. And Craig, Craig was brilliant. For the first time in his life, he actually took charge. My mum even graced us with her presence one day. Made sure that we knew that if there's anything you need, Phoebe, anything at all, do give me a call. <laughs> give her a call. I mean, that's not, I'll be around again tomorrow, Phoebe, to do whatever needs doing, or, you know, just to listen. That was a few weeks after the funeral that it hears. And it's not like, it's not like an express train piling in. It's, it's like a, it's like a dark blanket slowly suffocating you. I did quite well, actually, under the circumstances. It was Craig who struggled. Kept going into Molly's room and switching on her mobile, listening to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star over and over again. We hadn't cleaned out her room. No, we were waiting, waiting for a different day, a different time where it wouldn't be so painful, whenever that's going to be. Now, Craig went downhill fast. He became, I don't know, depressed and, and withdrawn. And it was like he was a different person. Like one moment, he's a dad doting on his little girl and the next, just, just irritable, not wanting to spend any time with me or with anyone else for that matter. He just sat around the flat. In the same chair with the blinds drawn, just, just staring. He said, he said he felt like he was lying in the dark with no light in his soul. Thank you, darling. Oh, thank you. Much appreciated. No, 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 that's enough. That's enough to get me a, a coffee and an apple pie. Yeah, I know the feeling. So, no, you're going to miss your show, darling. Off you go. Thank you. All right. Bless him. It's always the old dears and the old boys who have the least amount to give who are the most charitable. It's the arseholes in the financial district. They're the worst. See, I know how Craig felt, but one of us had to keep going. I went back to work a few days after the funeral, but Craig, he couldn't. As his depression got worse, he lost his confidence because he couldn't face work. He got worse and he sort of got in this like downward spiral, like worrying about not going to work, but doing absolutely nothing to get himself back there. It's like some self-fulfilling prophecy. And to be honest, I wasn't in a great place myself. But I did try and help Craig. I did. I said to him, you know, the things were going to get better, but he just said, you don't understand, and, and that he was going to throttle the next person who told him there was a light at the end of the tunnel. I tried to get him to keep seeing his doctor, but he said, what's the point, Thieves? What she does is give me pills. I even booked him in with a therapist for CB, a CBT or something. I don't know. He didn't go. He just, he just kept crying. And then one day... One day I came home and he wasn't in his chair. I looked around the flat and he was in the bathroom. It was awful. He was still alive, just, I phoned an ambulance and, and they did come quickly, but he lost so much blood that his heart gave out on the way to the hospital. They, they did try and revive him, but it was no good. He was, he was gone. Well, I mean, <laughs> at least I knew how to plan a funeral. But at that point, the funeral was the least of my worries. Because everybody's so, so sympathetic, aren't they, in the beginning, but that only lasts for so long. First, it was the landlord, Jeff. Uh, he knew what an awful time I'd been going through, but did I know when I'd be able to start paying rent again? Apparently, I have bills to pay. 
well i'm sorry jeff but craig is gone and he's the one who went all the money to pay the rent and unfortunately there's no way that i can on the pittance that i own to be fair he waited as long as he could but inevitably the day came and i had to get out so i went to the council absolute waste of time do you realise, Miss Turner, that there are lots of people in need at the moment, some of which are in much more need than you, who are homeless with a family? Oh, lucky them. Not only do they get to keep their kid, but they get a house too. But apparently, apparently, if you're a single grieving homeless person, well, then you're not priority need. And it's down to you to sort yourself out. And don't even bother trying with rented accommodation because housing benefit. It don't even come close to covering your rent anymore. So that was it. The start of my fall from grace. Where all of my aspirations, they just evaporated away. At first, I thought I'd just be on the street for a couple of days. You know, just until I get myself sorted. But it don't work like that. You can't just sort it out. And for starters, we're going to keep stuff. You know, I had to leave most of the mine at the flat, but then Jeff threw it out. And, and where are you going to wash and keep yourself clean? I managed to get a bed and a shelter for the first couple of nights where I could have a shower. But then I had to leave when some nutter threatened to knife me because I wouldn't give her my necklace. And what do you think my progressive employer thought of a me member of staff who would turn up in dirty clothes? And who, let's be honest, after a couple of weeks did start to smell a bit. I'll tell you. We're sorry, Phoebe. We are beginning to get a few complaints off members of staff, so we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> Look what they say on their website. Now, go on, Google it. At K Promenus, we don't think of you as an employee. We think of you as somebody who runs our business, somebody who defines our success, unless you've got nowhere to live and whiff a bit, of course. There you have it. I had gone from having everything I ever wanted, a job, a home, a partner, a kid, to here, living on the street with, with nothing. A diamond in a sack full of coal. That's what my mate Eggy calls me. But I say mate. He's the guy I walk to the arch with every night to get a coffee and a hot drink off the do-gooders at 7pm. And I suppose I could try and apply for universal credit, but you need to apply online. And my laptop was something that ended up in Jeff's dustbin. And to be honest, I'm not quite sure what I'd write in the your address column. And it is frightening. It's really frightening, you know. Having to sleep with one eye open every night to keep an eye on my stuff. And for the idiots who think it's a laugh to piss right next to me. That's how all of us on the streets get what I call crimson eyes. Sort of distant, vacant stare looking into the midst of despondency. You all get them after a few weeks. It's all in the eyes. You can tell a lot from a person's eyes. But you can't feign security, contentment and fulfilment when all you are seeing is pain and desperation and hopelessness. And for the past year, for the past year, I've been lying in the dark with no light in my soul too. And do you know, do you know what gets to me? What makes me really angry is that all that we seem to care about is these kids living comfortably off mum and dad, not being able to get on the housing ladder, rather than all the people living on the streets with nothing. Everyone is just six missed paychecks away from homelessness. That's what they say, but no one ever really believes it. Now, homelessness is something that happens to other people, right? That nutter who lives down the street who was on drugs or, or the son of the guy from the pub who's always in trouble with the police, but not me. No, not me. Well, it has happened to me. And it's here and it's now. And you know what? It is shit. And to be honest, nobody really cares. 
Unless it's on your doorstep. Nobody really cares.